Hey y'all, it's been a while since I did an update, so I uh, decided I'd do an update on my aquaponics in part one and then uh, my organic garden outside. Pardon me if I'm sound a little congested. I have allergies ever since I come back to Oklahoma, so that's part of the part of the deal. Um, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of growth actually on the aquaponics. I had a lot of uh, changes in the fish that I've been, had in here, and I had a lot of problems with that too. I was experimenting with crawfish, um, which I still have one really big one in there. He he ate all the other ones. I had probably. I don't know, eight or nine of them at one time. And uh, I was feeding them too, like peas and um, things like that. And he, he was still uh, uh, eating all the other crawfish. But then I had, a, I had crawfish in here, and I had bluegill, uh, red ear sunfish. I even had largemouth bass in there at one time because I was catching them. And so I figured, you know, I'd give it a shot. But I ended up releasing all those fish into the, um, the pond out back. And um, because it just it just wasn't right for this system, you have to you really I mean it's okay to experiment with things, <clears throat> but that's part of what this is about. But I've found that unless you get fingerlings, let's say tilapia fingerlings or even bluegill or catfish fingerlings, it's going to be very difficult to um, to get the fish to to start eating com either commercial feed or um, you know whatever that whatever it is that you have, you know they don't sell bluegill food at the um, um, at the Pet Smart or wherever wherever you go. So it's I don't know. I'm sure you can probably get get that stuff, but um, I've you know I I tried uh, getting getting that to work and everything, and that was an, that was kind of a challenge. So I decided to just go back to goldfish. They I mean they keep the tank really clean, like they they just on the bottom, if, there's, if you haven't fed them for like a couple hours, they're like they like clean all the rocks and stuff too. So I mean, they're they're got I got 20 large ones in here, and ever since I put these in here, the growth has really like taken off. And I don't know if that's just because they they produce a lot of ammonia, um, and I'm sure they do. I, I've I've heard that they do, along with koi. I know koi are real bad about that too, but I guess it's a good thing for us. Um, I guess I can just show you. Oh, another thing, I have um, a bug problem, like a big, big bug problem. Um, so if you guys have any solutions for me after I get done showing you this, just drop a comment um, below and uh, I'll try and get this thing figured out. I have been releasing ladybugs in here, so that's something to, you know, for your information. If you're, um, and I've got tons of them, I'll show you, I'll show you those outside in the tomato garden. They're, they're everywhere. So, um, okay. These are, these are the radishes right here on the front on this bed and you can see you know they're growing pretty uh, pretty good here's the that's what it looks like um, but then all over them there are these bugs they're not doing much most of the time they just sit there <laughs> I guess procreating um, but they're red in color and some of them are some of them are white in color so I don't know if they're I've never had these kind of bugs before I don't know what they are maybe aphids or something like that I don't know um, but yeah like I said I put the um, the ladybugs in there and they seem to they seem to go go to work pretty quick on them um, but there's just so many of them, so I don't know if I just need to just keep releasing, you know, ladybugs in here, and that's going to eventually uh, keep this problem in check, or or what? Or and then the other option is I could just take these radishes out altogether, which that's where they're mostly at is on the radishes, but they are every pretty much everywhere else too. Um, I could just take that radishes out and uh, <laughs> start start from scratch on on those, and that's no big deal at all. Um, but anyway, I've got <clears throat> progress on everything. I mean, the bunching onions are, I don't know, starting to get kind of bigger, I guess. The, the peas, if you can see that dangling in the, in the background there, that's a, that's a pea. Um, and then, the, like this radish, I don't know what's up with it, but it's like already like going to seed. It's got flowers and shit on it. And this one's not even, 
really doing anything like that at all. But it's already, it's like way bigger on the bottom. So that's just, I've never grown radishes before, so I don't really know. Um, there's peppers in the back. You can hardly see any of this. These peppers are huge back here. These are the flavor burst peppers. And I mean, they're just, they're so close to the light too. I'm sure I've already got peppers on. I'm, I'm thinking I'm seeing some right now. It's just so hard to see back there. It's kind of crazy that I didn't really anticipate, you know, that part of uh, this system being kind of um, vertically not not as accessible for me to get my hands inside of it and everything like that. Like if I was going to harvest this or um, I don't know, like I'd probably have to take down the, the light in front just to be able to really access it. Um, that's a tomato in the back there. It's actually gotten so high that it, it's... Um, I've got a reflector up here. I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but it's actually burning the tops of the plants because it's it's probably heating up with that light being on it, and it's actually burning it. I don't think it's the light. I think it's the heat. Um, it's burning them. So on top, there's no more growing. On top, it does have flowers that are right there, but now underneath it, now underneath it, I've got um, places where the the tomato is starting to grow out again. Um, let's see. I did have some flowers on the cucumbers. Um, you can see it right there, um, but I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it. It's. I don't know if it's not self-flowering or what. Maybe I don't know what I'm about to do. But um, <clears throat> anyway, that's pretty much. That's pretty much it for right now. Um, yeah, if you got any suggestions on the on the bugs. Definitely um, something organic, something that's not going to affect the, uh, you know, the aquaponic system. I don't want to kill any bacteria. I don't want to kill the fish, obviously. So, um, yeah, shoot me a line on that. I know there's got to be some good stuff out there. And you guys that have been doing this longer, this organic gardening, I mean, I'm sure you guys uh, know of something. And you may even know exactly what these bugs are. How the hell they got in my garden, I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. But I've got a lot of other plants and stuff up here, too, so... Um, that's, I don't know, I'm guessing, you know, that's what, that's what, that's what you get whenever you buy plants from, uh, the garden centers or whatever, and you don't really know, um, what's in the, in the dirt. So anyway, that's going to be part one. This is the aquaponics update. If you guys got any questions or you want me to go into more detail about something or ask questions or whatever, just, uh, drop me a comment and, uh, part two is coming your way shortly.